My name is Paul Fernandez, and uh, after 40 years of of greatly enjoying what I do as an artist, as a cartoonist, I'm still looking for that one drawing that will make me happy. How would Paul describe Paul Fernandez, the artist? Um, it's always been uh, my intention to draw for entertainment and draw for people who want to be entertained. And if I can get a, small, a smile out of somebody at the end of, of, a, of, of a long day or a difficult discussion, I think that's a job well done. <clears throat> so, so coming to think of it, I think the, the word artist is, is far too profound a word to describe someone like me. What do you love most about what you do? I'd say uh, right now, what I really enjoy with what I do is, is I'm in control of all aspects of the work that I do. You know, right from thinking of it to all the way down through uh, getting it to hang on a wall. So that's a, a, a cycle of different jobs and thinking and work that, that I'm in control of fully. So I don't need to go out to somebody and, and uh, consult with somebody else to finish what I want. And that's what I really enjoy today. Gives me a secluded, comfortable, peaceful way of life. How do you stay relevant as an illustrator in such a digital age today? Well, b uh, digital, digital work today is essential to any designer or illustrator today in today's world. And uh, being digital or going digital enhances your work. It allows you to multiply it and reproduce it and print it beautifully. But on the other hand, if you want to be relevant as a thinker and an Ill illustrator, there, there's one part of all that which can't be digitized at all. Like, like thinking of an idea, living that idea, smelling it, feeling it, that's not digital at all. And you must experience what you want to draw, hands on, you know, and you'll do a better drawing. So after you've done all that, go digital and make it a beautiful thing. Now, uh, a lot of your illustrations are known for their humor. Is that something that you've <clears throat> cultivated or was it purely incidental? Um, purely cultivated over, over a long, long period of time. And it's evolved over, over time. I always think of uh, humor, you know, that I, that I live in this small little garden of humor. And uh, it's, it's rich in humorous fertilizer. And I keep planting small seeds of thought in it every now and then. And when, I, when they sprout, I know that's something I've been looking for. Now, um, creative industries, like other industries, are ultimately transactional in nature. So how do you strike that balance between money and craft? Uh, while you have to strike a balance at some point, you have to uh, be transactional in, in, in your thinking because you've studied so hard to make that idea of earn money. You know, that's what we've studied for. But at the same time, once you've gone to your desk to work, uh, shut the door on, on all transactional and money and ambitious thinking and enjoy your work fully, you know, and don't mix the two at, on your desk. Once, once you've done your, 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 your lovely illustration, then, then you think of how much it will earn you. <laughs> I'm sure now you've dealt with creative blocks from time to time and it's something that demotivates students a lot in particular. So how does one deal with creative blocks? Uh, we all go through a creative block every now and then, every day sometimes. So if you were to equate a creative block to, let's say, a roadblock and you're driving this big, uh, huge car in, on a crowded road, well, get out of it and jump onto a cycle so that uh, you pass through that bottleneck that you have to go through. 
what I'm trying to say is uh, at your desk, your workspace, uh, have many different stations of work so that when you're blocked at this point, at this, on this job, you just uh, go to the next and, and the next and so on and then come back here with a fresh mind. Do you believe that it's enough to just be talented to succeed in today's market? How much of a role does networking and building relationships play? No, it's not enough to be just talented. Um, I think uh, every one of us has been given a talent, God-given talent. But if we were to uh, just rest on that gift, then I think networking and working relationships would be very important to such a person. But if you were to nurture that talent and energize it and push it forward, it would uh, lead you and, and then you'd rely so much less and less on networking and, and relationships. Is there, um, is there a formula to being successful as an illustrator in India today? Master your craft and, and once you've mastered it, tell, tell India about it. And, and tell the world that you're the master of your craft. But having mastered that craft, uh, don't enjoy its success too much. Don't, don't live on its uh, greatness and its success. Go forward, master the next craft and the next and the next. And you will be master of, of a greater craft. There is this perception and a lot of us do believe that Indians are quite sensitive. Do you feel that's ever restricted the kind of work you do in any way? Not at all, not at all. But at the same time, I don't like to get onto uh, a case of thinking that is going to get into an area where I don't know about or I'm going to hurt someone's feelings or I, I stay away from all that. I, I keep it happy and, and quite simple. What would you, t you say to a student that's fresh out of art and design school? Stay fresh through, through your life and, and, and stay simple while, while you're at, at your work. Also, I, I would really say uh, take every opportunity to learn a little bit about everything around you because at some point, whether it's chemistry or, or, or geography or, you know, travel or whatever, it'll all come together to make your work better at some point. So be alive to the smallest, simplest things around you and imbibe them.